So now let's add the reactor chamber, which will be actually the combustion chamber. We are going to use a stoichiometric reactor. And because we have plenty of more data, we need to go to the next slide. So important things to define is either you choose it as adiabatic, which will be heat duty equal to zero. The pressure will be 10 bar or, well, of course, the temperature cannot be stated because we want to know the final temperature. Okay. So reactions are given here, stoichiometric, 100%. And this is going to be a little bit tedious because we need to state each combustion equation because we don't know if we are going to have, let's say, a little bit of toluene or maybe zero of benzene. The best thing is to add all the material which you know it can be combusted. For instance, nitrogen gas, well, leave it as it is. It's not likely that this converts to any NOx. So this can be ignored, but all the other ones must be stated. So let's go here. Let's add the reactor. Reactors are in the reactor tab. We're going to use the R stock. So we add it. Let's have this as inlet. This will be the combustion chamber. Add this reactor. It needs at least one stream going out. And of course, it's going to be our final let's call it stack yes and this one will let's because vapor is kind of confusing let's assume this most naturally natural gas okay so let's go to the reactor let's say we are going to assume heat duty will be zero it's adiabatic we are not going to cool it down or heat it the pressure will be operated at 10 r and technically speaking this is only vapor only now the reactions, I will definitely recommend you to either skip these or fast forward because we are going to take a little bit of time. Just pay attention on this one, the first one, and then you can fast forward. Methane and oxygen produces CO2, which is not present. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. No worries, I stated before, whenever you have to add a new components, just go back, add them CO2. Of course, yes, I want to change it. And water. Run the method. But as you can see, the method is not fully run. And once we run it, the new interactions are calculated. So continue with the reactor. First, we need to edit this one. The first one was CO2. Yeah, CO2 and water. So the one of the things I don't like that much of this right here is that you actually need to input all the data so you need to know the balance for this case it's okay because I know how to balance the reactions but many times it's kind of tedious we define as one with respect to methane the component will be ethane oxygen will produce CO2 and water so this case is relatively easy because we are assuming complete combustions of the materials and fully combustion that is all is converting to CO2 and H2O. But it will be interesting to assume that only a certain percentage is based on, let's say only 50% based on the inlet of ethane or propane, or maybe even, I don't know, there's selectivity. Propane will actually prefer converting to carbon monoxide and so on. But in this case, no worries, this is going to be the easy case you need to learn first how to use this then you will start wondering how to actually model the units so CO2 stream or based on propane now propane is propane here oxygen CO2 Actually, let's go back here. I still I don't remember. Two butane, thirteen, eight. It's two, thirteen, eight, ten. Okay. It's two, thirteen, eight, ten. Based, of course, on butane. This is cycloxane. Of 
course, it cannot be present on both sides. Cycloxane will be Only two left, which is benzene. Benzene is two, fifteen, twelve, six, and finally toluene. So one problem here is that you don't, if you don't define the toluene reaction, for instance, you assume it's going to be okay that it will not react, well, you will have to be going out of the reactor. Aspen will not model it and will not assume that this is a combustion chamber. So that's interesting because you know that if you have open flame and spark, it will actually combust. So that's important to remark that this model is not that good if you assume there will be combustion. You need to state it for sure. So let's run it, the combustions, okay. Hopefully there are no errors, we wait for it. There's an error in the combustion chamber, let's go and check it out. It's only a warning, so it will be fine. Okay, essentially it states that it's normalized. That's fine, that's not a serious error, it's just a warning. Actually, we can ignore it, it's fine. And this is mainly because we don't have an inlet, so uh, we are assuming that there is a reaction and there's no reaction. So let's run that again. Okay, it's fully defined, next. Still, we have warnings, but let me see the stack composition. You can see there's only CO2, water, oxygen, and nitrogen, which assumes that there was full reaction. That so that's fine. We don't need to know much more. We are we know that this is working, so let's assume that this is fully working. This was the reactor. 